All right then, gang, so now we have our Firestore collection up and running for projects. We have three documents in here now. We have content, uh, the due, the person, the status, etc. Um, and by the way, I've just noticed this Rick Grimes right here, which is a nice touch, I think, in the zombie Ipsum. Although I don't know whether you are watching The Walking Dead. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but I am actually really annoyed at what's happened. But I'll leave it there. Um, but anyway, we have our collection. And over here, we need to connect to this Firestore database. Now, the first thing we need to do is install a package using npm. So I'm going to do that first of all. So open up your terminal. Make sure you're in the correct directory to do ninja. So I'll say cd to do hyphen ninja. Then I'm going to say npm install Firebase. Now, if you're using an old version of npm, you want to pass in the save flag. But I don't need to do that because I'm using a version over 5.1 or something like that. So I'm just going to click enter. That's going to install Firebase for us. While that's doing that, I'm going to head back over to Firestore and what I'm going to do is go to the project overview because right here it's going to show us how to hook up Firebase with our application. So if we open this thing right here, it's going to show us how to get started and all we need to do is copy this stuff and then paste it in our project. However, I don't want to copy this. Instead, we're using npm to install the library. And also, we don't need the script tags right here because we're going to place this directly inside a JavaScript file anyway. This would be true if we're placing it inside an HTML file, but we're not. It's going in a JavaScript file. So let's copy that stuff and we want to head back over here. Now, I'm going to create a new file inside the source folder called fb.js. And this is where we're going to do all of that stuff. So let me just close off my terminal for now. And inside here, let's just paste this in. Now, to begin with, although it's not fully installed yet, it is taking a while, I'm going to say import Firebase from Firebase and then forward slash app. Now, if you just import from Firebase, that's importing the whole library and it's going to throw up a warning in the console when we start this up because we're not using the whole suite of services. We're just using auth. So all we need to do is import forward slash app, which is the core functionality of Firebase. And then underneath that as well, we're also going to import Firebase forward slash app. So then what's going on here exactly? Well, first of all, we're importing this stuff from the Firebase library we just installed. And I think that should have installed by now. Yep, it has done. And by the way, I just noticed this should be Firebase forward slash Firestore, not app for a second time. So we're importing the core functionality and also Firestore. Then what we're doing right here is setting up a config object. And we got this, remember, from over here. This is telling us how to set up Firebase on the front end. So this config object contains some different settings. And one of those things is the API key. And this API key is used to identify our application on the front end to Firebase on the back end. So when we're making requests, Firebase knows where it's coming from and it knows which project on the back end to hook this up to. OK, so then what we do is we say Firebase dot initialize app to initialize our application with Firebase on the front end. And we pass in this config right here into that. So now we're all set up to use some of the different features. Now, the feature we want to use is the Firestore, the thing we just imported up here. So first of all, we need to initialize that Firestore and set up a reference point so we can start interacting with the database. And the way we do that is by storing it, first of all, in a constant. So we'll say const. And then DB, you can call this what you want. I'm just using DB because it's short and it stands for database and set that equal to Firebase, which is the whole service dot Firestore. And this is a function and that initializes a connection to the Firestore database for us. And that connection is stored in this object right here, this DB object. So later on, when we come to interact with the database, we're going to use this object to do that. So there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is because of a recent update that Firebase has made with how it works with timestamps. So all we need to do is alter a little bit of the settings. So say db.settings, then in brackets, pass through an object. The setting we want to update is timestamps in snapshots. And we're going to set this to true. That's because, like I said, of a recent update from Google Firebase when it comes to working with timestamps. If we don't do this, then we're going to get a warning message in the console. All right, then. So now we just need to export the database object right here so that we can use it in other components. So we'll say export default DB. OK, cool. 
So now we've done that, we can now interact with the database. But where do we need to interact with the database from? Well, first of all, let me spin up this in a browser. So if we go to one of my other terminals over here, I've already run npm run serve. I'm just going to open this up in a browser. So control click and we're going to see this application over here. Now, if we go to add new project, if we click add project, this is where we want to communicate with the database to add a new project, right? So let's do that first of all. So if we go back to the code, we do this in the pop-up component and we submit it down here. So instead of just logging this stuff to the console, let's instead try and add this to the database. Now, the first thing we need to do is import this database right here into this component so we can use it to communicate with the database. So we'll do that up here. We'll say import and it's going to be db from and we're going to say at to go to the root directory source forward slash db fb, which is this file, Firebase. OK, so then now we've imported that we can use the db object down here. So before we use it, I'm going to construct some kind of object and that object is going to represent a document which we save to the database. So the object that I'm going to create will be a project object. So let's say const and then project is equal to an object and then we need a title for this which is just going to be this dot title remember we're storing it right here and then we also need the content so i'll say that is this dot content again we're storing it right here then we want the due date so let's say due and it's going to be format using this thing right here remember date fns so we're going to format and then we pass in the due date that we have and then use this format string to do that so d o and then m m m y y y y okay so that formats it in the correct way that we want to store this date then we also need the person now we don't have authentication enabled for this application or anything so there's no way of checking who is currently logged in so instead i'm going to hard code this i'm just going to say the net ninja but you know you could add authentication to this app and you could get the current user and put that as the person instead. So the status then is going to be ongoing because we've just created the project. So obviously we're going to be working on it. So it's ongoing to begin with. All right then. So now we have this object. What we need to do is take that object and we want to save it to the project's collection inside our database. So first of all, we'll grab the database object DB, which we just imported up here. Then to reference a specific collection inside our database, we say dot collection like so. And in brackets, we pass through a string and that is the name of the collection we want to access. So now this is getting us a reference to the project collection. Now we want to add a new document to this collection. So it's as simple as using a method called add. And then what do we want to add? We want to add this thing right here, this object. And that's what we do. We pass through an object inside here and that is going to add this object or rather this document now to the project's collection on the back end. OK, so before we try this out, let me just explain one thing. This right here, this is an asynchronous task. And by that, I mean, it takes some time to do when this code runs. It's going to go off, perform this task to add this project to the collection. And then we want to do something. We have to wait for this to finish. Now, because this is asynchronous and it takes some time to do, it returns a promise. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about promises, but essentially what that means is that we can tack on a then method at the end of this. And this then method is only going to fire when this is complete. OK, so it doesn't fire right away after we execute the code. It waits for this to be complete, return a response, and then we can fire some code afterwards. So this then method takes a function as a callback. This is an arrow function. And inside that function, all I'm going to do is say console.log. And I'm going to log this to the console added to DB. And that's just for us as a developer to see in the console, um, in the browser, when this has successfully been done. So then let's save this and give this a whirl. So fingers crossed, everyone, because I hope this works, but I'm not guaranteeing it. Let's go to add new project. And if we add a title, I'm just going to say test for now. And I'm just going to type any old junk here. And down here, a due date of the 30th, add the project. And if we inspect in the console over here, hopefully we will see 
added to DB. Can you see that? Sweet. So this has now been added to the database. I hope anyway. Let's go and check it out. Let's go to the database and we should see our projects collection over here on the left click that now we see four projects before there were three now there's four let's just click through them to see where our new one is there we go so we have a content we have the due date the person the status the title and also this is auto generated for us as well this id much like the other three when we use this add method over here to add a new document it auto generates that id for us okay so now this is all working. We can successfully add new projects, but this isn't updating right here with the new projects or in fact with any of the projects from this uh, database. So we still need to look at how we can get documents from the database. And we will do that soon. But first of all, I want to show you a couple more things from Beautify.